with so many industries determined to capitalize on new network edge technologies and services, where is the real value for service providers? Of course, you first have to know where the edge is. We try and simplify things and, and look at it from a, a kind of three main areas. Um, I guess we'll, you know, extending beyond the, the data center, we'll look at the, the, the first edge, is what we'll call the near edge, uh, you know, typically defined around a central office type location. Uh, and, you know, depending on the geography and the, and the service provider between, I don't know, maybe 10 to, to hundreds, uh, high hundreds of sites. That's the near edge. Uh, and then um, the second edge would be the far edge, uh, which uh, is uh, typically centered around um, the aggregation of cell sites, uh, you know, base station sites, and that's uh, in the thousands of, of uh, locations. Uh, and then uh, the third edge is, uh, would be the enterprise uh, on-premise edge. Uh, and that's uh, around, you know, virtual CPEs, uh, universal CPEs, um, you know, SD-WAN, those types of applications. And we have a new reality, and that is um, data-driven enterprise, right? The ability to uh, manage massive amounts of data that happens essentially where the consumer is, where the enterprise is, where the devices are, at the edge, right? And latency requirements mandate that the cloud now becomes disaggregated. We start, you know, uh, splitting the, the, the cloud. And if you see at the large cl cloud providers, AWS and Google and Am Amazon, um, they are all essentially moving towards highly distributed cloud. And that's where the telcos have a, an amazing opportunity to cloudify the uh, central office, do aggregation at that point, and become the new and probably the most powerful and most uh, agile uh, new cloud, right? From our perspective, Edge is less about location. It's more about a point in architecture, right? So we see Edge as anywhere in between the application and the end user, right? So very similar to how Intel was describing it, we see CPE environment as an important Edge closest to the customer. We see mobile edge, which is residing in a part of the mobile access. And we also see what we call network edge, and the cloud guys call it cloud edge, <laughs> which basically is in between cloud and the customer pushing the compute closer to the end users <coughs> than the actual cloud itself. Right? And I mean, AT&T has this uh, fairly comprehensive edge to edge strategy, which the goal is really to harmonize, integrate all of these edge locations and to create a platform that allows our customers, the business customers, to uh, run their business more flexibly and more agilely. We see it actually very similarly to AT&T and Intel. Um, any, the edge is any point along the continuum between the device and, and central cloud, right? And the two most common locations, is, as you mentioned, are the customer premises edge and the network edge. And um, we, we believe that the world will evolve toward a Kubernetes environment where we need to be able to distribute workloads along any points in that continuum in order to make an end-to-end -end service work. I agree uh, completely with, with the Intel view because we're working with 26,700 data or, uh, central offices in the US, for example. You know, that's uh, the, the beginning of where the edge starts. Out to hundreds of 140, 150,000 cell sites that as everything gets moved into a centralized RAN or moved up the antenna, we've got these, uh, these cabinets that are available that already have power, that already have uh, HVAC and have backup and generators and so forth. So those are the two big areas, but then also private networks. When you get inside buildings, you get in industry. Uh, again, those are all edge data centers. There are certain applications, and especially the new and emerging applications, that requires a huge amount of data to be processed in near real time, right, with minimal latency. Mm -hmm. Now, it is difficult um, to, to say we can send everything back into the cloud, process them, and send the result back. So there are categories of application like extended reality, those that require near real time processing of a huge amount of data, right? So the, that's the problem we're trying to address. Now, how do we do that is just a function of continuous movement from hardware-centric into a software-centric world, virtualization of the infrastructure, 
which, uh, as you probably know, AT&T has done quite well, right? So we've uh, virtualized more than 55% of the network so far, and we will get to 75% virtualized global network uh, in 2020. You know, we're, we're talking a little bit about the location. We're talking a little bit about the use case right now. We really haven't hit the, I think, the one of the elephants in the room, which is, um, you know, how do service providers um, collaborate with, um, you know, the, the cloud hyperscalers um, at, at the edge? Uh, because that's, yeah, obviously, the, the title of the, the panel was the Battle of the Five Armies. But um, I, I think there is, you know, definitely a lot of monetization um, opportunities. And, and of course, uh, you know, depending on where the value uh, line is drawn at the, uh, at the edge, um, you know, who's actually going to monetize um, this, this particular um, capability. The opportunity here is to take the same platform that you're running NFV on and then offer that to an additional tenant, very much like Amazon did when they did the public cloud in the first place. Because the incremental cost to offer an existing cloud to another tenant is very, very small and the profit margins are very large. Integrators, I think right now is what I'm seeing the most of in terms of startup or getting into the game. Um, the traditional, the carriers, you know, and, and the tower owners in, in North America are playing very well in it. Uh, but a lot of the integrators, the Dells, the Schneider Electrics, the uh, Comscopes, you know, are moving more towards the providing the containerized, the containerized solution. Um, but again, who's going to actually put the services on those, I think is still the question to be answered. Everybody wants to have, you know, these cool smart home services, the smart city services, um, you know, better traffic control um, of the traffic lights, etc. Augmented reality, virtually everybody wants to have that. The complexity is way too high. If we get to that point where everything is programmatic, software-driven, then the service offering then becomes, you know, easy, right? You focus on the, where the value is, which is the service. And we are, I think, incrementally getting to that point, but we are not anywhere close to that point yet. One thing that's pretty clear is with 450 service providers in the world, you can't really have 450 different edge platforms because yeah. the development community wants one target, right? So we need a consortium, really, of the, of the telcos to come together and decide, okay, what is our environment going to be at the edge? Because that's the only way a, a developer company can do a global service. What we see is less of an intense competition, per se. It's actually more about intense collaboration, right? Correct who you can partner to actually line up the ecosystem. More and more of these application use cases are going over the top, right? So that's why we're focusing on convert or transforming ourselves more into a digital service provider. I mean, the title of the forum, right? <laughs> uh, and a big part of that is we see collaboration between carriers, content providers, um, solution providers in, in cases, right? And also the, uh, um, the, the, the actual management service providers. The, um the viewpoint has to be what are the developers that are going to develop the applications that get consumed at the or, or run at the edge, what do they need, right? And what they need is what they're able to get with, with the public cloud today. Very easy to consume it. They write it once, they run it, they can run it globally. Um, and, and that's what they need. And I think if we keep that in mind as an industry and we start working toward a common edge platform that, that multiple uh, developers can use, I think that's the opportunity. What we see Edge is use case driven, right? Heavily rely on collaboration of the technical ecosystem, right? The value is in the actual integration, the end-to-end -end nature of it being an enabler for businesses. So that's how they make money. That's how we make money, right? And also in simplicity, keep it simple, right? So we, we figure out the details, the complexity, keep it simple for the actual end users.